I tried faceless YouTube automation for three months and it's about time somebody told you the actual truth. Let's go back to day one when I was scrolling through my YouTube feed. But I wasn't scrolling for no reason at all. I was on a mission to find a way to make money online. And that's when I came across something called YouTube automation. The name kind of gives away the idea. You have a YouTube channel, but instead of making the videos yourself, you find a team to do it for you. I like the idea, so I jumped right in and step one was to choose my niche. When it comes to YouTube, there is a golden rule you can't ignore, and that is the law of supply and demand. We want to find a niche with plenty of viewers, but not too many content creators. That way, we can find that sweet spot where my channel can thrive without too much competition. So after a few days of research, I hit the jackpot and found my niche. But here's where I chose to take a different path from the average YouTube automation channel. On YouTube, most creators obsess over ranking on the YouTube homepage. This is the browse feature that makes up around 70% of YouTube's total traffic. But what about the remaining 30%? Well, this is where my strategy is different. Instead of trying to rank on the crowded homepage, I'm looking to create content that viewers are actually searching for. For example, if you go to YouTube and type in best kitchen appliances, you will get a list of videos in the search results. So my plan is to create videos that rank in search. And here's the best part about this strategy. Notice how some of these videos are over a year old. That means if I can rank for some of these terms, I will continue to get views for months and even years after I upload the video. Step two is the most important part, and that is finding the right keywords for our videos. And after spending the last week doing keyword research, here are the three easiest ways. The first one is the most straightforward. I'd go incognito on YouTube, type in a phrase like Instagram how to, and look at the recommendations that pop up. Now, these suggestions aren't random. They reveal what people are actually searching for on YouTube. And if you can get your video to rank for one of these keywords, then you've hit a gold mine of potential views. The second approach is to use Google Trends. That way I can get an idea on what topics are buzzing right now. And understanding current trends is vital because it helps you ride the wave of what's hot at the moment. And finally, the third method, which will cost money, but trust me, it is well worth it. I use the tool called Answer the Public, which can show you the most search for terms on YouTube. That way I can be more specific with my keyword research. And with these new tools, I was now armed with a list of promising video ideas. So the next big step was to begin making the videos. But before I could begin, I needed to find the perfect team. So I began looking for high quality freelancers that were within my budget. I looked at Fiverr, Upwork, and people per hour, but in the end, I decided to go with Upwork. But that's when I realized that this YouTube automation thing wasn't going to be as easy as I thought. Now, let's bust a big myth about YouTube automation. It's not a walk in the park, okay? Yes, you are making the videos yourself, but you're serving as a full-time manager. You're not only overseeing the video creation, but you're guiding, trading, and giving instructions to your team. It's a whole new skill set altogether, and it's both challenging challenging and exciting at the same time. And don't get me started about hiring. It's a whole new adventure in itself. You get a flood of applications with many of them just being chat GPT written responses. So it's super overwhelming and would take a lot of patience. But after many job postings, I finally found the right freelancer within my budget of three to five dollars per video. And this freelancer would be in charge of creating the entire video from start to finish. Now sure, the videos wouldn't be top tier production value, but the goal was to aim for quantity with a few standout videos that pop off and drive most of the revenue. So with the freelancer hired, the goal was now to upload five videos every single day. Let's see how it goes. So it's been a few weeks of uploading and I'm not getting the views that I was expecting. Currently, the business is running at a loss, which is stressful. Because in the back of your mind, you feel that discomfort and uncertainty. I know that I need to invest to grow the business, but I fear that I'm burning money with no future return. And that initial spark of motivation was beginning to fade, but I was not going to quit yet. So fast forward a few weeks and my fears were a false alarm. The videos are now beginning to pick up. So even if the videos flop at the start, understand it's not over yet. The videos still have a chance of picking up in the algorithm later down the line. So I'm feeling great right now. We're starting to make about $20, $30 per day, which isn't anything massive, but hey, it's progress. And due to the momentum, I'm a lot more comfortable with reinvesting back into the business. Now, quick tip. One thing I noticed is that many freelancers won't have 
good equipment. So I actually bought my freelancer a microphone to help with the recording. Now, I know this seems silly, right? But if you think about it, you're only spending like $30, $50, but you're improving the video production by a lot. So the return on investment on that is massive. And it's also a nice gesture that will improve your relationship with the freelancer. And after doing this, my videos started performing better. So with the new momentum, I decided to go hard and increase the upload rate. But like everything in life, when it looks like you're at the top, there's always another problem waiting to stop you in your tracks. The one freelancer which I was working very well with decided to quit. So that left me with no one to make the videos, which is a bit of a problem. So I had to pause video production and go looking for another freelancer. And this was a frustrating process. You're always playing that game of finding a good balance between quality and cost. And when I finally found someone, then I realized I had to train this guy on my entire process again. Here's a pro tip if you want to make this process easier. Create a working procedure for your new hires. This speeds up the onboarding process by a lot. With the new onboarding system in place, I've got a larger team with many freelancers. That way, if one leaves, video production doesn't completely stop. And income is going well. Currently, I'm bringing in approximately $3,496 per month in ad revenue, which is pretty solid. Now, earning your first dollar on YouTube is an amazing feeling, but the journey to get there can be long and frustrating. So let me walk you through the entire process step by step. Everything from hiring freelancers to video production to take you from zero to earning over $165 per day. So if you want to start earning money online and escape your nine to five job, then check out my free video training by clicking the first link down in the description. So things were looking good with my channels and the revenue was rolling in. But then out of the blue, one of my channels hit a major problem. YouTube slashed the RPM by more than half, which completely killed my momentum. I tried to stay the course, hoping things would turn around, but the RPM didn't recover. So I had to slow down with the uploads as I grappled with this new issue. It was a tough period and I found myself taking a step back to reflect. What now? I asked myself. I felt my motivation slipping, but it was a moment to take things into my own hands. And that's when I tried affiliate marketing, where you promote products and earn commission. I knew affiliate marketing would help, but the impact was a lot more than what I was expecting. My revenue increased by over 50%. And as you can see, I made over $1,300 in October and over 1.4,000 in November, which is a massive boost. And even better news, around the same time, the YouTube RPM issue got fixed, so everything was back to normal. And as of today, I'm making around $4,799 per month in total from my YouTube automation channels. And the plan now is to create some new channels with a bigger focus on affiliate marketing. So I'll see how that goes and I'll update you guys in another video. So earlier I mentioned that I was able to make close to $5,000 per month with my YouTube channels, but I could only scratch the surface in this video. So if you want a more in-depth dive into the specifics of this strategy, then check out this video next on how I make $4,799 per month on YouTube without making videos myself.